Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Dr. Brent Pritt with Science of Falling, and today I'm going to be presenting the missing link of fall prevention, essentially the thesis of Science of Falling. I originally created this presentation with the intention of presenting at colleges, um, at gyms, anywhere that you know might find some use from learning falling techniques and kind of incorporating this into their uh, daily practice and with their patients or clients. So let's get into it. So who am I? Well, like I said, my name is Dr. Brent Britt. I'm a licensed physical therapist, uh, also a strength and conditioning specialist um, through the NSCA. I graduated from the University of New England in Portland, Maine, 2020, originally from California, but I moved to Maine for three years to obtain that degree. And I went back to California briefly to work at a outpatient clinic. And now I'm back in Maine working at another outpatient clinic here. So I've practiced in both California and Maine in general outpatient clinics. Uh, I took, did some work in a hospital setting during my clinicals, but I'm mostly an outpatient PT. Uh, along with that, I'm an avid exerciser, um, including weightlifting, which was kind of my first love, and obstacle course racing and parkour. Um, and that's kind of my moving background. A lot of that moving background is what caused me to find uh, my love for balance of falling, as well as create the platform science of falling. So what is Science of Falling? Well, this was actually a project I created in 2020 near the beginning of the COVID pandemic um, while I was studying for my physical therapy boards. So I had this free time, I wasn't going out much, and I decided to finally take a stab at making something that I thought was valuable to other PTs and other healthcare professionals in, at large um, to teach proper falling techniques. It, it was really just born from the realization that in healthcare, we don't actually teach falling techniques or how to fall properly to patients that would really utilize these techniques efficiently and it would be helpful for them to learn and prevent injury. Oftentimes we only teach balancing, uh, maybe how to get up off the ground and we're missing that middle piece. So the, the mission was to create a platform to teach these falling techniques and balance strategies in order to prevent injury and to improve functional ability in the, the lives of our patients and clients. So let's define what a fall is because it can be a little ambiguous. A lot of times people just think it's going to the ground, um, but I think it's a, it's a little more fine-tuned than that for a good definition. So the Merriam-Webster definition would be to descend freely by the force of gravity, which is a generalized fall, right? We're just descending to WHO, any event which results in a person coming to rest inadvertently or not on purpose rather on the ground or floor or other lower levels. So this one doesn't necessarily uh, imply that the person has to go to the ground. They may just fall down and catch themselves on a seat or something like that. Um, now, this one's my favorite from McGraw Hill. Precipitous drop from a height or from a higher position, which may be accompanied by injuries. I think that a lot of people think that falling has to accompany an injury, but I don't think that's true at all. A matter of fact, I think if people learn to fall correctly, it can actually be a useful human movement to get out of a dangerous situation. Um, or be more athletic. So the gap in physical therapy, I already kind of talked about this, but we're gonna go over it again. So we often teach people how to balance, you know, especially me in my outpatient settings, I teach people how to balance all the time. And it's really, you know, whether they're coming back from a fall injury or they're coming back from an outpatient procedure, such as a knee replacement, we wanna get these people stable on their feet so that they don't fall initially. And I think a lot of people know how to do this. A lot of people, um, enjoy doing this with their patients or their clients and teaching them how to balance. Uh, and it, it's a great part of the, the uh, continuum of fall proofing a patient. A lot of us also more in the PT realm focus on teaching patients how to get up. Now this is actually not done as often as I think it should be, but it's not unheard of to have PTs teach a patient how to get up off the ground, uh, maybe have them do that multiple times. You know, with athletic populations, we might be working on something like the Turkish get up and just really getting people comfortable being on the ground. Because I find that after we are out of our, you know, our young teens, maybe we don't go on the ground very often anymore. We, we usually stay in seats. We walk around a lot. We don't often lay on the ground to do stuff unless we're doing something maybe like yoga, which not everybody does. Now, here's the piece that I created science falling for is the falling techniques. There's this continuum of balance, falling to the ground and getting up. So if we don't teach this middle piece, we're doing a huge disservice to our, our patients and clients because we're, we're taking out this area that either 
can make or break whether a patient or client gets up safely um, from the ground after a fall or if they're stuck on the ground because they ended up breaking a hip or breaking a wrist or getting a concussion. So we're missing this huge middle piece. And I think that we need to bring this more to the forefront of healthcare, physical therapy, chiropractic, whatever it might be, um, and make it an actual part of our, our toolbox and modalities for these patients. All right, so let's talk a little bit about falling in the older adults. So when we think of falling, we often think of, you know, 60 plus and all the bad things that might happen at that point. So we're going to start off on there. So the prevalence of falls in older adults, uh, one out of four older adults fall each year. That's I mean, a 25% chance that someone that you love that maybe 60 plus is going to fall down. You know, one in five of these falls causes a serious injury, 800,000 patients a year are hospitalized secondary to a fall. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going in for anything um, absolutely crazy, but that means they're going to the hospital for some reason, whether to check up on themselves or to have um, some uh, surgery done or something like that. Now, falls are also a common cause of hip fractures and TBI, so traumatic brain injuries. These are things that can drastically reduce a person's quality of life, can actually, you know, um, increase their all-cause mortality and really take them out of the game of life uh, pretty efficiently if we're not wary of them. So hip fractures and traumatic brain injuries are definitely a big factor to worry about when falling. And not only that, but just talk about the monetary side of this. In 2015, more than $50 billion was spent on treating those who had suffered a fall. That's insane. $50 billion for something that is quite preventable if people have the proper training and techniques and as we'll discuss later on, it doesn't take much training at all to teach someone to fall with a pretty adequate um, falling technique. So uh, that $50 billion is quite ridiculous for the ease of preventing that money being spent on that. Um, if we also look over to the left here, you know, fall death rates in the U.S. are increasing 30% from 20, 2007 to 2016 for older adults. You know, this is a little bit of an older stat, but that's pretty insane. You know, every every year it's going up that much. And if we look at this other one, if you know, if it goes at this rate still, seven fall deaths every hour by 2030. Again, for something so preventable where we can use techniques to train people to fall properly and prevent injury, there's no need for seven people to potentially die every hour uh, by 2030. It makes no sense. So this is a cool graph um, from the CDC. This basically shows the falls reported by state, and this was in 2018. So um, I apologize, it's not fully up to date here, but it's, it's close enough to where we are now. And this is interesting because it goes by state to state. So you can actually look up your state. Um, you can go to the website and it will pull up the stats of that state as well. So if we just look at these colors, you know, the, the light pink or the lightest pink rather, almost white there, 20 to 26% of falls are reported there. And so I'm in Maine right now. So if we, if we look at the middle pink right here, that's gonna be um, 26 to 28% basically of people falling every year. Now I'm also originally from California. So if we go over to California, that's actually the highest level of falls reported. It's also a big state. So uh, I expect there to be more falls reported just by sheer numbers, but you know, 28 to 33%. And now it's also important to know that these are compared to the average of fall rate of 27.5% for those 65 and over. So that's just comparing to the older population here. But that's still quite high um, that almost a third of the population in California, a little over a fourth of the population in Maine are having these falls. And now that's not even talking about if an injury was involved or if death was involved, but it's still talking about the fall rate. And so obviously we, we have an issue with people falling. There's a balance aspect we need to uh, address, but we need to address the falling aspect. If this many people are falling, we got to teach them how to fall. So let's go to the next slide because this is actually playing off this one a little bit more. So fall deaths by state. So, and this is again, 2018. So if we again, look at these numbers with the key over here, talking about Maine had a lower fall rate than California in the last slide, but this is also one of the highest death rates per fall, 88 to 105 per 100,000 falls, which is crazy. Now, Maine is also one of the older states in the country. It's also has snow and ice. 
So how much of that affects this number, I don't really know, but it's still interesting that there is that high of a rate of deaths, again, for something that is quite preventable. Now, again, interesting enough, California, which had the highest reporting of falls, has the lowest death rate of falls. Now, that might be because there isn't the snow and ice element. They're not, you're not slipping without any control. California tends to be one of the healthier states in terms of activity levels in older adults. So that might play into it as well with, you know, more strength and everything, but still, you know, 28 to 53 deaths per hundred thousand for something that's preventable is still quite outrageous. You know, I, I would like to see this maybe 10 or 20. So it's definitely something to look at. And again, if you look at the bottom of the slide, this is referencing 64 deaths per 100,000 adults as the average. So why should older adults in the fall? You know, we're just adding on to what I just talked about. Well, you know, we can reduce the injury risk and increase confidence after learning falling techniques. And there have been some studies, which I have not referenced in here, but um, that show patients with higher fears of falling tend to fall more. So if we reduce that fear, we can reduce their likelihood of falling in the first place at all, but also emboldening them with confidence that they, if they do fall down, they can protect themselves with a proper technique. Not only that, we talked about earlier how most people don't go to the ground. So just teaching falling techniques inherently because of the physicality of it, they're going to be getting on the ground. They're going to be moving around on the ground and they will get comfortable on the ground, which is something I believe should be considered as a natural human movement and a natural position for us to be in. Now, this is pretty cool. They train other aspects from being on the ground. You know, if we're on the ground, we have these older adults putting weight bearing through their upper body. So their muscles and their bones are also going to be getting stronger. So it has so many benefits beyond just preventing injury. So is, is fall training useful for only the older adult? Absolutely not. You know, it's, it's good for everybody. So who is it good for? Well, it's everyone. So adults, both young and old, children and athletes, everybody's going to benefit from learning these proper falling techniques. So why should children learn falling techniques? You know, their kids, they're pretty low to the ground. You expect they wouldn't be injured that often from falls. You'd actually be kind of wrong on that though. 66% of fatal falls among children occur from a height. Now, because of their lower stature, what may not seem like a big height to us is actually going to be a much bigger height to them. So teaching these kids to have some sort of semblance of basic falling technique and idea how that looks could protect them from this height. You know, 8% were the result of falls on the same level. So pretty low, but again, they have short stature, so that's expected. Among children under 15 years, um, old non-fatal falls are the 13th leading, leading cause of disability adjusted life years loss. So basically when a child falls, they get injured, maybe they're paralyzed or something where they, they essentially have that relatively quote unquote normal life and now they're disabled and they don't have the same movement capacity that they did before that fall. So learning the fall techniques can prevent this. Also ranking as 12th leading cause of death among five to nine year olds and also 15 to 19 year olds, you know, shouldn't even be on the list of the ranks for deaths among children, you know, fall should be something that uh, a young, healthy kid is able to come out of easily. Obviously, if you're falling from a 20 foot height, that's a little bit different, but from basic falls from, you know, six feet or below, it, it doesn't make much sense that that's even a factor in uh, death among kids. And in 2004, there's nothing more recent that I found, but in 2004, 46,000 children died from falls worldwide. Senseless, senseless death that, you know, if we in healthcare or, you know, even personal training or schools taught kids how to fall, we could prevent so many of those deaths um, without even really trying or making these kids feel like they're, they're trying to prevent a fall. This is really cool. So falling is a normal part of child's development, especially in the early years, you know, uh, these kids fall dozens, if not, you know, more times per hour, just trying to learn to walk as they get better. They don't fall as much, but we can utilize that area of frequent falling to kind of train proper falling techniques as these kids learn to walk and they learn to, you know, use their muscles correctly. We can just add in a little bit of that fall training and get these kids on the right track way early on and just make it a part of their life without even thinking about it. Also, because they are lower to the ground, just like that last stat of 8% of injuries from children on that low ground, it, you know, they don't get hurt as much. So teaching them how to fall from a level ground when they have the shorter stature until they're, you know, six foot 
uh, adult is going to be much safer. We can ingrain the pattern a little bit earlier. So, and despite popular belief, motor skills might not actually be easier obtained at younger ages. Um, so we should actually teach children to learn these techniques at a younger age so that they have more time to ingrain these motor patterns into their, their motor skills and make it so when they do fall like this child in the, the photo, they have proper technique and they automatically do it without thinking, just like riding a bike. So this is, this is my speculation because there's not much research actually on falling right now relative to, you know, say balance research. But I think if kids learn to fall earlier, they will actually ingrain these skills and make them more succinct and part of their motor skill tree, like we talked about, um, for a longer time and actually reduce overall likelihood of injury well into their adulthood because this is going to be a motor pattern that they um, know and they understand and it's just automatic for them. So what about athletes? You know, we think about athletes as being the cream of the crop, physicality, and, you know, a fall can never hurt them, right? Well, that's actually not quite true. There's, there's very sparse statistics on this, but we'll talk a little bit about that here coming up. So generalized research um, is sparse, but more attention is given to the type of injury. So, you know, the number of ACL injuries in basketball rather than how the actual ACL injuries occurred. 27.9% of sports and recreation related injury episodes resulted from falls during the year of 2011 to 2014. Again, this is probably the more recent that I could find um, just because the research on this is fairly sparse. Falls lead to nearly half of all the TBIs uh, related to hospitalizations in the U.S. Sport related TBIs are about 4.5% of sports injuries, so a lower percentage of sports injuries as a whole, but just falling in general is such a big factor of traumatic brain injury that we need to address that whether it's an athlete or anybody else sports and recreation activities contribute to about 21 percent of all tbis among american children and the adolescents so you know if these kids are playing football and they get hit pretty hard and they go to hit the ground their head recoils that's that's a tbi related to a falling type incident which may have been um, at least minimized through proper falling techniques Acute upper extremity fractures in sports are also associated with falls to a high degree, although the percentage is obviously going to vary by sport because of the different demands on the body. So finger fractures and snowboarding, running and skiing are mainly caused by falls. Uh, as this gentleman in the picture shows, you know, he, he's taken a pretty aggressive fall. And if he uses proper falling techniques, he can get out of it safely. If he doesn't, and he kind of just lets his body ragdoll. There's more um, chance of him suffering a pretty either fatal or serious injury. Distal radio fractures tend to be associated with sports in which falling is common. So again, um, what we would call foosh injuries in the healthcare world, falling on an outstretched hand can be prevented with falling proper falling techniques. Fractures are 25% of all horse riding injuries and the majority of these are due to a fall. So getting kicked off the horse, um, not a very common sport for people, but it's still interesting to see that the falls are so prevalent in a sport like horseback riding, which may not be obvious to a lot of people. So not only that, but fall training can actually be improved or be useful for improved performance. Uh, you know, it, a lot of people focus on fall training for prevention of injury, but how about we just look at it as um, an actual performance enhancer. So in some sports, fall training um, is already included. So martial arts is a big one. Parkour is huge. Volleyball, which most people don't think as of learning fall training, actually has some things like laying out and you know, going for a pancake as a type of fall training. Some sports lead to passive learning of fall techniques and it's trial and error and it's kind of a self-limiting thing. So if someone can't fall properly, they're going to get hurt easier and they're going to fall out of the sport faster. So football, baseball, skateboarding, skiing, snowboarding, these are all things where we don't train falling, but inherently, if you don't fall well, you're not going to progress in the sport because you're getting injured and you're not going to want to do it anymore or be unable to do it anymore. So, you know, how can it actually be used to improve performance? Well, we can reduce time on the ground. We can allow riskier plays to be executed, like a uh, baseball player diving over the catcher, going for home base. Um, and we can open up movement options to move around opposing players. Again, just like this, this player diving over the catcher. If a person does not know how to fall, 
they could do that. And that might be a very risky play and lead to one of those foosh injuries. But if they know how to fall, they can do a dive roll pretty simply over that catcher, make the play, make the point, you know, end up on all the highlight reels and uh, essentially just be an awesome player that has that movement option. So is fall training effective modality for reducing injury? The research is saying yes. And although it's it's relatively sparse, all this, the research that is out there right now is definitely uh, for fall training. So if we look to the, the right, this is me actually in my early 20s practicing um, some fall training at a park board gym I went to in California, uh, the Flying Frog Academy. And, you know, as I, you can see me there, I'm doing actually doing what's called a shoulder roll. So just practicing is fairly easy. It's actually relatively fun, but let's look at the research of fall training. So hip impact can be reduced by around 16% with sideways falling after only 30 minutes of training. Now, um, sideways falls are actually fairly um, high contributor to hip fractures in the elderly. So, you know, if we train these elderly for 30 minutes, we reduce the impact by 16%. That's quite dramatic. And that can actually save someone's um, hip, save them from a hip replacement and eventually, or hopefully save them from um, disability in the long run. For someone who's more skilled in the, in the art of falling, such as a martial artist, you know, these techniques can re reduce hip impact by at least 25%. So check those numbers out. If we're talking about 16% after 30 minutes versus 25% for a skilled fall, that 30 minutes is almost getting you up to an expert level. So it's, it's quite extraordinary how quickly we can learn these techniques to be effective with them. So control backwards and forward falls um, can reduce injurious forces to the ACL after landing on the ground compared to a soft landing technique where we bend the knees and we kind of squat into it. So if you're a basketball player um, and you're going up for a sh jump shot and then someone pushes you and you come down in an awkward position, I would rather have that player kind of fall down, roll out with a proper falling technique and then get it back on their feet quickly and try to stabilize on their feet and have more of a chance of tearing that ACL because, you know, yes, they might get up, get up a little bit quicker if they land correctly, but if they injure the ACL, they are going to be out for the rest of the season, most likely. So if we can teach these players to know when a awkward fall is going to occur, how to fall down properly and get back up quickly, we can reduce the number of ACL tears and other types of injuries quite dramatically just from having that as a movement option. Now, this next one's from a meta-analysis with a bunch of different um, studies in it, but you know the general consensus was that intentional stepping reactions, squatting, elbow flexion during a forward fall, forward rotation, martial arts rolls, and bodily relaxation all can reduce injurious forces during a fall. Now, I did not put in here, but I want to mention that the martial arts technique of slapping the arm out was actually found not to have any effect, and in my opinion, because you're actually adding force to the fall, I would assume that on concrete in the real world, that's not a mad environment like most martial arts studios, that you might actually injure your elbow, arm, or hand because you're adding force to your fall um, with no real reason for it. So what kind of fall techniques should be taught? So a lot of the uh, research, just like we talked about, is based on martial arts techniques. But like I kind of alluded to, most martial arts techniques are actually performed in a padded environment of some sort. The real world's not like that. The real world's all concrete, hardwood floors. You know, you sometimes you have grass, carpet, or sand around you. But, you know, 90% of the time, especially if you live in a big city, you're going to be falling on concrete. And that concrete is not forgiving by any means. So what I want to kind of bring with science falling is the real world falling techniques. Uh, just like I said, martial arts techniques aren't designed for the real world. They're not designed for the concrete jungle we live in. Patients should be taught techniques that transfer the unique challenges of the concrete world into their falling techniques. And they, they meld those two and are ready for the hardest types of falls so that when they land on something soft, they're even more safe. There is a gentleman called Amos Rendow. He created uh, something called parkour ukemi, where he essentially took basic martial art, arts principles of falling and morphed it into the parkour world where he utilized those basic techniques on the concrete world and adapted them to make them safer and more efficient for everybody. So what are kind of the, the highlights of parkour ukemi? 
Uh, it's designed for the modern world. You know, techniques allow reduction of injury in almost any situation. And there are there is a falling continuum that this gentleman made. Um, the techniques include, but are not limited to, safety roll or shoulder roll, uh, which is seen in this this photo on the slide. Side rolls, back rolls, half rolls forward and backward. Uh, break fall variations, which are very uh, common in martial arts settings. Drop landing, such as the sock landing from a jump, and then quadruped variations, such as things like the ukemi gallop or um, crawling on all fours, galloping, stuff like that. So some key underlying principles of safe falling techniques, protect the head. We don't want to, you know, the head is our lifeline. So if we hurt the head and we get a major TBI, our life changes forever. So we want to protect the head as much as possible, uh, preferably not let it hit anything during a fall. We want to absorb force over the longest period possible. Um, this can affect the, the force absorbed per second. So it's kind of like throwing, if you have a cube and you throw it on the ground, it's going to hit pretty hard. If you throw a ball on the ground, it's going to roll and absorb that force until it slowly stops. So less force is absorbed by the actual object or the person during this. We want to use meaty parts of the body as contact points because that's going to add some extra padding to us. We want to use the palms, we want to use the butt or the glutes, and we want to use the back musculature. So instead of doing a gymnastics uh, forward roll where we're rolling over the spine, we want to actually use a diagonal cross section from shoulder to hip where we go over a lot of that back musculature, saving the bony areas and saving the joints. We want to keep the body relaxed as possible. You know, we don't want to be Gumby necessarily, but we want to be able to absorb shock as we catch a ground maybe and roll over and just simply go to it instead of being rigid and stiff and trying to hit our arm on the ground and have a foosh injury um, occurring. You know, we want to be aware and cognizant if a fall is about to happen, it's better to just go with it rather than fighting it. And that's going to mean squatting to the ground, getting as close as possible so that we reduce the distance we have to travel to hit the ground. That's going to effectively reduce the impact forces. And finally, you know, same idea, we want to go with the fall. If, if a fall is occurring, we just go with where it's taking us. And then we use our arms, our hands and everything to slightly direct it just in case there is an object or a person in our way. Now, this isn't always going to work out perfectly, but it's better than falling into an object that can um, possibly hurt us or impale us or do something bad. So if we can slowly direct and maybe graze an object or completely miss an object, we're actually going to be much better off. So the four beginner falling techniques everyone should learn. And I, I pulled up some videos and I'll show these here in a second. Um, stepping reactions are not technically a falling technique, but they're kind of the, the, the front line to preventing a fall. You know, these are these are essentially where you start losing your balance and then you step out to catch yourself. So you, you'll lose your base of support essentially. And you have to stop yourself by stepping out in any direction and preventing the fall. Now these can also be used as a uh, transitional technique into a fall where you step out, you maybe do a slight lunge where you get closer to the ground and then you go into a falling technique, again, reducing those forces. So let me show you that one real quick. All right, so I queued up this video for you, and this is actually a video I made about a year ago teaching the stepping reaction continuum that I use with my patients. Um, this will take people from not understanding what a step reaction is to essentially creating a pseudo fall and teaching them how to be reactive and able to make a stepping reaction on any issues. So this is just a basic side step that I had my dad do. He leans out of his base support. And once he finds that tipping point, he falls. So as I'm teaching this, I'm protecting him to make sure that he doesn't fall completely. But this is a very useful um, technique to learn how to start that step and reaction process and fall efficiently. All right, the next one is the butt fall. This is gonna be the first falling technique that I teach most people. This is about as simple as a proper falling technique can get. It's utilized in backward falling scenarios where you are falling backwards and you're either gonna land on your back, your butt or your head. And in this scenario, what we do is we actually get the, this person to crouch down as much as they possibly can, aim to land on their, their glutes as their first contact point and then roll backwards, kind of like a roly poly, these people will often have a couple of bruises on them from the fall, especially if it's kind of a violent fall, but it'll prevent any fractures or serious injury to a person. So I queued up this video and this is me again, a, a video from about a year ago, me teaching falling techniques in the old clinic I used to work at. Um, and this is me demonstrating a basic backward fall. 
or backward butt fall, excuse me. So that was about it. That was very simple. Just crouching down, falling in the butt, rolling out like a roller pulley and coming back up to either your butt or your feet, depending how much momentum you have. It's very simple. And it's the first technique I'm gonna teach any um, person over 65, uh, much easier to understand. And it kind of gets the person used to being on the ground or on a mat. All right, so these are the more advanced beginner techniques that I would teach somebody. The first one is going to be a half back shoulder roll. Now, I like this one because um, as one of my, my good buddies, Christian Fairfax says, he's a, he's a parkour coach, but he says this is kind of the, teaches the basics for a lot of the more advanced techniques. So this one, although basic, is also a base for everything else. And so in this one, you essentially, it's, it's an advanced version of that backwards butt fall where you, instead of going to both glutes, you go to one glute. So say we're going to my right glute and then you roll along diagonally along your spine, along those meaty points of the back musculature, rolling to your left shoulder. So from right hip to left shoulder, and you use your hands to stop yourself so you don't roll completely over. So you're going to your back and you come back up onto your hips or your butt. This protects the, the bony areas a little bit more since we are using those meaty points. And it's also better for higher momentum falls because you can stop yourself with your hands from rolling over backwards and injuring your neck. This is definitely the best choice for people who have more of an athletic background, uh, who have the basic prerequisites uh, of physicality. So let's check this one out. Again, this is going to be me teaching this uh, in one of my tutorial videos on sciencefallingboard.com. So go to the hip and roll to the up shoulder as I use my hands to stop myself from rolling back over. Now, at the same time, it's a little bit more um, complicated technique because you actually use your legs as rudders to, to steer yourself if you're gonna hit something. So you have a lot more control in this position than the, the basic butt ball. All right, the, the most uh, difficult basic falling technique to learn is going to be the half forward shoulder roll. So the half back shoulder roll kind of teaches a person that diagonal meaty pathway to use to prevent injury in a fall. The half forward shoulder roll has you actually going over forward your head, just like a somersault, but in that diagonal fashion. So this is going to be definitely better for um, any fall within your kind of frontal plane um, or in the, in the plane in front of you rather. And this is, just that exact opposite of that last fall. It's, it's always going to be safer to use this technique than simply catching on your hands and coming to your chest or just falling with a block arm and, and fushing essentially. It requires much less upper body strength than the, the typical forward fall, which is again, catching yourself in a push-up position. So let's check this one out. All right, so now this one is essentially absorbing force over a longer period of time rather than just stopping yourself forward. So this is me demonstrating this again. So going over the back to that sh right shoulder to the left hip, using my hand at the bottom right there to stop myself and using my feet to stop myself as well. So fairly, fairly complicated versus the, the original butt fall or simply just falling out with the arms outstretched, but you're not gonna get injured um, nearly as often with this, if ever, because it is such an efficient absorption technique for the force from falling. All right, so this is uh, kind of a fun part of this presentation. We want to analyze some falls. So I, I, I'm a big proponent of analyzing falls so that you can determine how to get out of different falling scenarios. Now, this is more of a, uh, I would say, academic exercise. But it's also kind of fun just for the lay person to see, oh, I wonder how that person fall. What could they have done better? Um, and this is also a little bit more fun than just looking at slides. So we're going to look at five different falling videos that I've taken out and I've put on my um, social media for science falling. We're going to basically talk about them briefly, uh, what happens in the, in the falling scenario, how this person may have prevented it, or maybe why they, they fell that way in the first place. And maybe it was an efficient fall overall. All right. So here's the first one. This is a gymnast on the uneven bars. I am not a gymnastics uh, specialist or even knowledgeable at all about gymnastics. So I've seen this variation of this fall often. And I, I'm from the gymnast I've talked to, sometimes it's the best way to get out of this situation that I'm gonna show you without getting completely injured, especially with the pad environment. Let's watch it. 
There you go. So she's doing a skill, but misses the grab on the bar, lays herself out flat and hits the ground with her stomach in that pattern environment. That's great because what she's actually trying to do, it seems like, is reduce the potential injury from trying to land on her feet because landing on her feet is going to have a lot more force through her body and those uh, the knee and ankle joints, possibly leading to some sort of ligament, ligamentous injury. But by laying her body out, she's actually absorbing the force throughout her entire body on this matter environment. So quite an interesting type of fall, something you'll see often if you watch some, a lot of gymnastics videos of people missing their skills. So it was, it was interesting. All right, the next one, this older gentleman right here, watch his feet. He's getting a little crossed up there now. This gentleman clearly, from the beginning of the video, it's going to replay here in a second. That's quite a wide base of support as he walks, very kind of rigid type of gait, and it's it's kind of choppy at the same time. So he clearly doesn't have much control walking. Then he adds a moving element, which is his dog, to it. And you can see he crosses up and he actually steps on his own foot, leading to him falling down. And I'm pretty sure he probably was pretty banged up after this because that was quite a hard fall. His elbow got hit pretty hard on that left side of his so it's it's interesting to watch this because those stepping reactions i was talking about there actually is a technique of using something called a karaoke um, a grapevine or also what i've also heard called the stroll to essentially learn to cross those those legs over and be more efficient in cross stepping just like he's doing right there and teaching him how to be okay with those awkward steps and save himself or at least get into a position and get into the ground safely through a squatting technique. But at the same time, a patient like this um, that you see, if you were able to look, watch this video and then see the patient, you would definitely wanna work on their balance as well. Um, Cause clearly the balance was a little bit off before you began walking. All right, so this is more athletic. Um, this is Tracy Porter of the, the Jets, I believe. Um, versus Marshawn Lynch. So Marshawn Lynch is actually gonna take Tracy Porter, this guy down, but just watch what he does. So that's Tracy Porter coming up on him, watch him, he rolls it out and he gets back in the game pretty quickly. So roll, see how quickly he stands up and starts running. So he's back in the play. So if we're talking about falling techniques leading to more athleticism, being able to fall efficiently and get up right away is gonna help you stay in the game longer and actually potentially make a critical play um, rather than just kind of fall on the ground. So if you actually watch the beginning of the video or a couple of times in the video, people trying to tackle them. I mean, watch these people just fall on the ground and act like a ton of bricks. That guy falls down, doesn't get up very quick. Tracy Porter gets up fairly quickly. But if we watch the rest of this play, there's actually another guy down here, that guy just out of the play instantly. So if these people know how to dive, tackle, and roll out, get back in the play, they might have a second chance to stop um, a run from happening. All right, so this one's funny. This is my nephew. Uh, I was at his, my brother's house, and I told my nephew, to, show me a fall. And so this is what he did. Runs up. He goes, actually goes to his hip. So that's, he naturally knows how to fall properly, even though he's short stature, and he doesn't have to do that. If you watch him, he goes to, his left hip falls to shoulder to shoulder and rolls out and essentially saves himself a little bit of shock. But, you know, he was just messing around. So for him to do it that well, and if you watch any of my, my following tutorials, um, I, I teach a similar technique to that. It's quite impressive that he's already doing it without even ever learning how to. So this these abilities to fall are innately within us. We just have to um, kind of let them flourish and grow and be trained properly. All right, last one here. This one is more of a real world situation. This is a person of average age, I'm assuming 30s probably from what I can see from her um, and stairs and some heels. This is not a, a fun video, but it definitely drives a point home. And the point it drives home is that falls can happen to anyone anytime, even if you feel like you are healthy and able. So there was a couple of mistakes in this. A, she was carrying a lot of packages uh, that probably could have been done in two trips, but you know, 
how many of us are actually going to take the time to do that? A lot of us take 17 bags and try to get into the house as quickly as possible from the grocery store. It's just, we want to be efficient. But the thing she also was doing was she wasn't taking her time on these stairs. She didn't efficiently, you know, spot her next step. Her heels also got a little wobbly right there. And that leads to her fall. Now, how could this fall have been made better? Even if it's happening, prevention is the best medicine. But, you know, if we're trying to prove, make this fall better, what could she have done? Well, she definitely could have ditched those boxes instead of holding on the whole time. If we teach proper falling techniques, we teach that safety is gonna be the number one priority, not what you're holding. So she should have dumped those. And then she could have probably squatted down a little bit and get closer to the, the ground as she was going down and reach her hands out and end up in more of a, uh, probably like a barrel roll to her side. So she rolls down the stairs efficiently instead of just hitting every single stair very hard. So real world situation, not always cut and dry on how the falling technique would help this, but you know, I'm just important to know that this is going to happen to anybody. And there you go. So that is the, the missing link presentation. You know, I, I originally created this for colleges, uh, especially PT programs and had the intention of creating a, a lab component after it to teach these basic falling techniques, the, the four that we talked about. And I hope to still do that in the future, but I definitely wanted to get this out to everybody so that everybody has the, the option to kind of investigate this further. This is just a essentially a, a Kickstarter for what I want to make science of falling and what I want people to take away from falling as a modality. I, I really want this to become commonplace in healthcare, in personal training, in gyms everywhere, and make it you know a, an acceptable form of training um, just like balance training is. So I appreciate you. Uh, make sure to check out sciencefalling.com, uh, Instagram, Science of Falling, and my Facebook uh, page, Science of Falling as well. If you want this presentation for any reason, feel free to uh, message me on any of these. Uh, my email is also on sciencefalling.com through the contact page. And thank you for watching. Here are some references for those that want to grab some of these. They have, were mentioned throughout, or they were uh, shown throughout the slides. Thank you. Happy following.